We all know how expensive college can be. Welcome back to College Conversations. I'm Dr. Janice Fedor, and I'm here to answer your questions about college. My husband and I currently have two daughters in college, and um, we know how um, overwhelming the added expense is. Even if you just have the one child in college, it's a lot of money. So I thought I would share with you some of my money-saving tips on how to save, how to maximize your uh, child's um college tuition. The first tip I have is investigating into the tuition and learning how many credits your child, your student can take, the maximum number of credits that they can take per semester. Many institutions um, charge the same tuition, whether your child is taking 15 credits, which is the average and the normal if they wanna finish in eight semesters, um, or they take 18 credits, or um, they take 12 credits. So there's a big difference between 12 credits and 18 credits, but you're paying the same price. So I strongly advise you to check into the maximum number of credits allowed per semester. And if at all possible, have your child take that extra course. You might not wanna do this during the first semester. You don't wanna overwhelm them as freshmen or first years, but if they can handle it, I would strongly advise adding on that sixth class um, every semester that you can, because that will add up. And then toward the end, you will most likely be able to, to save it one whole semester, which is 15 credits total. And that's, you're saving a considerable amount of money if you can do that. The other piece of advice I would have is to strongly look into your major and the courses that are required for all four years. Try not to change majors if at all possible. I know sometimes it can't be helped if you have a major switch between say nursing and business or something. It feels like you're starting all over again. And in some cases that's the right decision. But in, in a lot of cases, um, you could just add a minor in in the um, direction that you want to go to. Um, say, for um, example, you could add a minor in business um, if you instead of switching to um, healthcare management or something, and you were already a nursing student and still accomplish the same goals. So I would look into that. I would investigate when the courses that you need are offered because not every, in a lot of cases, not all classes are offered every semester. So some are only offered in the fall, some are only offered in the spring. So you wanna be strategic in how you plan that out, especially with classes that have a prerequisite, such as you need to take accounting one before you need to take accounting two. Although those things are usually pretty well thought out by the institution, but um, you want to make sure that what you're trying to do, especially if you're a transfer student, you need you come in, you need certain classes. Um, usually, they can tell you a pretty you know uh, with pretty good accuracy what's going to be offered a semester or two ahead of time, and then you can plan accordingly. If your child took AP classes in high school, make sure that you're getting credit for those. That's not an automatic thing. You have to apply for that. Make sure they're getting. Uh, credit for the AP classes and there's in some cases they have to uh, have a certain score um, on the AP exam in order to get credit so you want to make sure that they're getting credit for those. I would look into double dipping on any courses that you have and by that I mean you're taking a course and having it satisfy more than one requirement. Maybe you're taking a course for your um, for your major for your degree program but then it also satisfies a requirement of the core, your college's core curriculum or a literature requirement or a history requirement or something like that. Um, so in a lot of cases, um, you, can, you can do the double dip thing. Um, they're okay with it, um, but you just, you have to, you know, be forward thinking and, and look at that, look at that, you know, going into it. Um, that's another way I've seen students uh, sort of lop off one whole semester toward the end is because they were just smart and strategic about it um, and looking into these things ahead of time. So 
it's really about being as efficient as you can. Um, and, and your goal is to really save up at least 15 credits is a whole semester. So, um, th that's really significant because if you can save one whole semester, then you're, um, you're not paying the activity fee. You're not paying the college, um, you know, enrollment fee and all of that. So like one whole semester is, is really your goal. It might be a good idea in some cases if you're getting close to, oh, we've saved a whole semester and maybe you've saved 12, 12 credits, but you're just one class short. It might be cheaper to just take that extra course at a community college or an online um, institution and then, you know, not, you know, not finish for the, or not have one whole um, semester that you're paying for, you're paying to be on campus just for one class. So to review, take the maximum number of courses covered by your tuition per semester. Don't leave free classes on the table. So if you're paying full um, tuition for the semester and you're only taking 12 classes, you're really leaving six credits um, worth of classes on the table because you've already paid for them. And once it's once it's done, it's done. That ship has sailed and you can't go go back and take the the extra class. The second advice is to plan out all semesters of your degree plan and then work backward and see where um, where you can double dip and where um, and how you can shorten the time. You might want to use an Excel spreadsheet for that because it is a little bit of uh, juggling, a little bit of mental gymnastics, but it's it's worth the time and money. Um, and the lastly is to double dip where you can figure out the classes where, oh, if I, if I take this, it'll satisfy more than one thing. Um, and that happens, um, in a lot of cases, more cases than, than you would think. Please check with your registrar's office at your institution. These are just general guidelines. Um, but there, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of time and money to be saved if you do your homework and investigation work um, up front. Leave a comment or question below. Hit, hit like if you liked uh, this video and please remember to share if you found this helpful and hit subscribe.